Okay, so my name is Ken. So uh, hello to everyone. Uh, because I think it's a new face, so I just introduce a bit of what uh, I do with the developers community here. Um, I'm a co-organizer for KupiJS, which is this icon here, uh, which is happening this Saturday at 11 a.m. So if you are free for brunch, join us. I also co-organize uh, Milo Dinosaur, which basically is a, a JavaScript studying group. La. Not related to PHP, but well, this is what I do for the... From SPHP. Sorry? Uh, no, it's uh, everywhere. Milo Dinosaur, it happens quite a few times at uh, SPH because I work at SPH. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why, uh, yeah. Uh, but other than that, sometimes um, we go to different places. Like there was one time we did it at Block 71. Yeah, when, when we have one of our uh, regular members who, had a, who runs a startup over there. So that's why we just went over there. Yeah. But nowadays, there's the junior dev, la, which keeps everyone busy every two weeks. So, yeah. So, um, today, what I'm going to share about is my uh, ex experience creating a simple PHP application on Google App Engine. Okay. The motivation for this is because, um, so just now, as I was sharing, I started uh, PHP programming since 2011. And uh, so the usual things I go to is like PHP, the MAMP, because I use a Mac. Then last year when I was at, um, the, you, know, you know, this year, this year. This year, there was the first year birthday party bash for the Google Cloud Data Center. So I went over there and then I see oh, a lot of new products. Uh. Then because all this while we know there's AWS. So uh, most of our stuff is, uh, as in we have played on AWS before, but Google Cloud, not so much. So I decided, okay, maybe I should try doing some simple stuff on Google Cloud and see if it's any different. Because AWS is just an EC2, which means it's just like a regular LAMP stack kind of thingy. Google Cloud, I'm not sure. So that's why I decided to give it a try. So okay, lah. so give it a try usually is you start google.com, get started. PHP, uh, Google Cloud. And then, uh, so I saw this page. Okay, still okay, like getting started. Then you see here how to run Hello World. Looks very uh, simple. Then I start to scroll down. So as I start to scroll down, I see the index of PHP. I start to get a bit worried because, hey, what's Silex? Actually, I never played with Silex before. So I was like, mm, okay. Then this looks very okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's getting too complicated. I just need a uh, echo hello world and you know the regular things that I can do with my LAMP stack. So, and then I search some more. Then I start to see Symphony coming out. Then I'm okay. I think it's time I need to do on my own because I think I researched for about one hour trying to find a simple one, but I couldn't find. So that's why I decided to do it on my own. Uh, okay, so this is the part uh, where I'm mind blown uh, that, you know, too, too many things, Symphony and Silex. Okay, so at the end of the day, this is my result. Okay, the code, hopefully you all can see. So it's a very simple one with MySQL I trying to connect, you know, echo, and then a form. And this form basically takes in a file, you know, and then uploads to the uh, cloud storage, which is like the S3 for AWS and then return something. So basically, able to connect to a database and able to receive file upload. Yeah, that's the basic My Hello World app. So how do I get to that was actually a journey. It's not that, um, some parts were simple. The echoing part was simple, but like uh, uh, uploading of files and connecting to the MySQL was, was a difficult one. So. These are three things, the app engine, the cloud SQL, and the cloud storage. So this, I think it's quite, the, the actual PHP runs on the app engine. This is your regular MySQL stuff, and this is your storage space. Okay, so I'll do the demo, uh, since it's, a, it's a, a small crowd here, so I can, I can do the demo. How do I escape? Okay. So, very simply, okay, uh, since we are all adults here, so we all have credit card. I assume everyone has credit card, so you need a credit card to start with Google Cloud Platform. I think that's quite uh, standard already. So to begin with, right, um, 
after you are in this page here you have already seen so just now in the afternoon i already uh tried started i have a few test projects here already so i'm just going to walk through how to create one a simple one so over here uh no actually here over here select a project right you just click on new project okay then i'm going to like uh give it some name uh php gae2 okay and create okay so once you create okay you'll take a while you see this twirly thing uh. okay it probably take sometimes 30 seconds to a minute so um just be patient the one thing i learned or the one thing i come to learn about working with this interface is that you need to be patient not everything comes out <laughs> immediately you know yeah, so now you see try php ga2 okay let's go in okay so you will be greeted with this interface uh. because for me i already enabled billing for all my projects so it's you see that everything is here but uh usually if you already start up real fresh right you have to go to the billing site and then to actually um uh let's see yeah enable billing for the application so in this case you can go to overview okay you see uh so the thing is once you have a credit card they won't deduct money you have 300 credits to run for a year so that's where you can play with whatever you want uh. okay then you need to uh, add in your projects here so like for this is already added here gae2 okay so the thing is you have your project ready so remember that the slide right three components the m engine the storage and the sql now you just click on this place scroll down a bit app engine okay then, then yeah welcome to app engine very simple one button create application choose where you want to go usually i choose asia la, because that's where i am and then php okay this is the part uh. so the tutorial that i went that i chanced upon is on flexible uh, so but there's standard and flexible for you to choose from uh, there's also online documentation to to tell you when you should use standard when you should use flexible uh, quite detailed actually they even tell you that uh, so the thing is about uh, what are the language and versions supported by the uh, flexible and uh, standard so you see a uh, standard actually supports only 5.5 which is outdated already and 7.2 is in beta whereas for the flexible one you have more recent versions of php it's not stated here but you you get more recent versions of php so there's one thing to consider as well as other things like uh how fast you can spin up the instance and all this so this is uh, for you to uh, play with it and to figure out okay where's my okay so i choose flexible in this case uh. okay just next okay so successfully uh, created you need to then download the cloud sdk this is your uh, command line tool for you to actually upload your code from your local host to the cloud okay so is it done i'll do this later okay done actually wow that's fast okay so my app engine is now ready so if you go to the dashboard here oh fail to load oh no shenanigans <coughs> aha okay so then you have your uh, app engine ready for your this project next thing so once you the thing about uh, gcp once you create an app engine right it will also create a cloud storage for you automatically so you just need to go in and check yeah then there you go you have your try php ga2 this is your cloud storage then here you can tweak the settings of your cloud storage just like s3 line. if you want to make it public you know you go here and then you go to permissions you know and then wait for it to load okay then over here add members in all then you see all users you know and then to make it 
to make your files viewable to the public, right? You just go storage object viewer. And then after that, you just add. Okay, and then just go to here. Yeah, then you see this uh, uh, cloud storage public accessible. So you have two things nailed down already. You have your app engine, you have your cloud storage. The final thing, which in my whole learning journey, which was the most complicated, is the SQL. <laughs> Any questions so far, by the way? Okay, so I go for the SQL. So over here. Okay, same thing, create instance. So when I was uh, playing with this, I think one month back, right? The interface didn't look like that. Now it looks like that, which I think is nicer. Uh, you can choose between MySQL and Postgres. I'm familiar with MySQL, so just like that. Uh, then you'll tell you, oh, okay. Last time, uh, one month ago, it didn't have such a new, such a fanciful interface. But now at least this one, it will tell you oh, which one you should be using and uh, what you will not have and what you will have. So, I mean, since this is a learning thingy, so you just need to choose development uh, because you don't really need HA, high availability and you probably don't need to increase storage. But if you are doing some more, some advanced learning stuff, then maybe you will need it. So, okay, configure MySQL. Okay, then as usual, test SQL2, password, just root. Don't use root ever, but this for demonstration, so it's okay. Location. Should be fine. Asia South East. Any okay. So here you also notice for this SQL uh, instance that you have uh, that you're going to create, right? How many CPUs? How much memory and storage you have? For just for your knowledge, um, you know, if you are more of a backend DevOps guy, this this information may be uh, something uh, that you will need as well. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just create. Okay, so creating this SQL, it will take one to two minutes. I timed it this afternoon, just because I was worried how much time it will take to, to run this whole demo. So I just, okay, so while this is going on, uh, I will show you my code first. Okay, so, just, so now you can see the code in uh, higher definition. Um, this is, uh, most of it comes from the, um, the Hello World code that I got from the Google Cloud documentation. You can't run away with vendor autoload because you need some things from uh, Google, which is in your composer JSON. You need your Google slash cloud tools and you need your cloud and cloud storage in order for the file uploads to work, yeah. So composer.json, this is the bare minimum that you need for this uh, project. Okay, app YAML is also needed. Uh, this, is to, this is so that when you, when you deploy this uh, project into Google Cloud, right, it knows, okay, what runtime you need to have, what's the environment, which you have configured, but this one is for the uh, deployment to know. Uh. And then your, where's your document root? For me, I put dot, but if depending on your application, if you, are, if you have a public folder, then you change this to public. Uh. Yeah, you know, but in this case, because it's a super simple, no framework PHP application, so it's just dot, okay. Uh, storage bucket, is the so this storage bucket is where you see it just now in your okay it's still so patience huh? the thing about Google Cloud is patience is the you know, cloud storage is just now where you are here if you remember ah uh, this is the name this is the string that you put over here you know okay user password not going to show you because uh, yeah this you decide uh, user and password. Is the one that uh, you will is once later you you see I will show you where to uh, put in this MySQL user and MySQL password thingy. 
Then also this MySQL DSN is a compulsory item as well. Uh, basically telling okay MySQL DB name, the Unix socket, yeah thingy. And you also need this Cloud SQL instance thingy here. So all these are compul these are the bare minimum compulsory fields that you need to have in your app YAML as well. So, so why is it to change it later after you create uh, storage? Sorry, uh, means over. Auto generated or uh, I no, it's not auto generated. Like this is like I have to create oh. from as I write it out on my own. Yeah. yeah. Of course, if you download from the cloud Google Cloud the documentation, they have a sample Hello World app. They also have this oh. Yeah. So you can, but they also have other things which I taken out after that. Yeah. So this is my index.php. So you have your vendor autoload. I have my env.php, which basically stores my, my SQL uh, username and password. Then this uh, storage client, you need to use it in order to make cloud, uh, to allow file uploading. Okay, this function, upload a file, is from the Documentation, so it's a uh, you can. I just copy and paste. I didn't even change because I just need to make sure it works first. And then all this file thingies, yeah, long. And that's that's about it for my index of PHP, which is my PHP application. Okay, let's see if the SQL is done. If it's not done, never mind. <laughs> okay, it's still. <laughs> Is still so so the thing is patience are patience. But never mind, as all cooking shows is I already prepared a set of uh, food ready to show you all. Okay, so that was uh, where I was. So this is my actually finished food. La, okay. So you have your you see the green tick sign when your SQL is ready. Okay, click into it. Okay, because this is just your SQL instance. You still need to uh, create stuff over there, which is your database. Okay, loading database from my SQL. So I have a test DB here. I think hope, hope you all can see. Yeah. Over here. Okay. Because you just created an SQL instance, but you still need to put in your database and then your users, which is here. Okay, you, then you give it a password, uh, you know, like create user account and give it a password kind of thing. Then, this is the one thing that tripped me up also, which I'll show you later. Basically, after all this, right, you will still need to uh, do this thing called the uh, uh, Google Cloud SQL admin thingy. Let me see. Uh. Oh, no, never mind. It's under API and services because what you have create you have created your the the tools that you have, but you still need to enable an API which is called the uh, Cloud SQL Admin API. Cloud SQL Admin, yeah, because this tripped me up for a bit because I thought after so what I did was after I created all this right. Then I start to deploy that PHP application. Then, then I, I basically I got to this page la. Okay, but it, it let me try again. It got me to this page, but it keeps giving me error with connecting to the database. Then I was like, why, 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 why is it not connecting? Then after googling for a long time, then I realized that oh, you need to actually enable enable this uh, admin API. Yeah. So that's the one thing that uh, took up about at least two hours of my time. <laughs> yeah. So what does this do? It's so that your you enable the API so that your application can actually talk to Cloud SQL. It's like a lot of the Google applications, their APIs. When you have an application or app ID or whatever, you need to also tell it what. APIs I have access to in the okay. whole cloud um, kind of a thing. Right? Okay. Yeah. So th this one, this one is 
which they didn't mention in the tutorial la, so that's why it, it wasn't very clear to me uh, how I also found out is also by um, because one thing is when you deploy the app right then you can actually look at the log files you know, this this part uh, G cloud app logs tail dash s that was actually where I also he actually did tell me like okay you your admin API is not enabled so okay fine yeah so okay so after enable this right then okay so done actually like that means yeah yes then you can uh, Google Cloud app deploy so this is what I did okay so you CD into your project folder initially you need to run this thing called G Cloud uh, init uh, Google Cloud init basically it initialize you ask you what is your um, project because once you Google Cloud init you ask you for your Gmail first then with your Gmail then you, they will be able to detect what projects you have on hand and then you link it basically to establish the profile then after that init finish right then you just uh, G Cloud app deploy okay and I will show you uh, okay then okay then I'll show you like uh, where is it going to deploy to you know, is this correct okay yes then you start to deploy and deploy and uh, so based on this afternoon's experience it took about let me see I timed it also uh, I started at 4.25 it uh, completes the deployment at 4.36 which is 11 minutes later so please have patience I think it's also because I'm using the flexible the app engine the flexible environment if I haven't tried the standard one really based on what I read in that uh, documentation just now perhaps the standard one may be faster so I wish I would give it a try anyway try, like after you first deploy, mm. then you make some changes and still that before. Mm. Like, still the same. Still the same. <laughs> still the same. Yeah. That's the weight for everything. Uh, the weight of for everything is like one more step that you need to climb that image. Mm. How about that? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, so I'm not sure, uh, but probably can give it a try but uh, if you manage to get it uh, faster than I do then yeah please please let us know uh, I would sure, but it's just my assumption yeah yeah, yeah. the G2 I need so it's uh, you really create like a dot G cloud folder in their project because I assume the settings are specific for each project hmm I don't see any G Cloud init files in my project folder though. Don't have. It's more like, or it could be in my slash use. That means in my uh, slash user folder. Uh, it could be there. Yeah, because so now now it's initing uh, So as in, because it does remember. So whenever I type G Cloud init, it will say, hey, your your previous uh, config is like that." Are you going to switch to another one? Oh. Uh, so it probably is in my slash user folder. Okay, so here is the part. Uh, you take, it already preempts you. Like, it will take several minutes. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, uh, about 11 minutes like that. So if you all have, if you all interested to try, make it fast. As in, if you all get faster results, do, do let us know. Okay, so at the end of it, uh, so if let's say everything deployed nicely, Okay, at the end of the day, uh, this is what you get, uh, you know. Uh, this um, your project name followed by dot appspot dot com then slash index of PHP. If I remove index of PHP, it will also work. Yes. Okay, so choose your file, probably text to send. Yeah, so it works, and then. How do you verify that it's been uploaded? Uh, go to your bucket, uh, refresh, and then you will see your text2.txt over here. Yeah. So that's the simplest application ever, like receiving uh, input. I mean, 
text entry not the issue it's more like file upload that's usually one thing how you handle it and then uh, communicating with SQL yeah. uh, for the AWS uh, RDS right uh, the so-called administrator account they restrict the uh, uh, options available to you mm. so they don't allow you to set all the uh, SQL options how about the Google Cloud man? SQL options ah. I think I think I think also have so that means like what user can do what ah. uh, yes you know that sometimes the my SQL default like they don't allow to something like group line uh, I think it's a five point six five point six have like some default this is some SQL uh, mode I think SQL mode nah, uses yeah, got the config file. Yeah. So uh, the AWS actually restricts uh, a block sum, uh, even from your so-called your administrator. Okay, okay. So, I'm not sure, man. Like, uh, configuration, like uh, configuration. Underwear, right side. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Not the MySQL.nr. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is the configuration. Mm. Yeah. Uh, log files? So, there's a log files of the MySQL instance. Mm, where? Is in. Uh, log files. Query, query log. Slow query log and stuff. Is there a way to see all the SQL queries? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'm not wrong, if you enable the slow query mm. lock, you will store in one of the system tables, mm. MySQL system mm. tables. Mm -hmm. So you have MySQL, you have this. Okay, I need to play this Whoa, okay, okay. This is basically stack driver la. that means everything bes besides just the SQL. De even deployment you also can see stuff. Yeah. So okay, so going back to my slide uh, Okay. So um so I actually I've already illustrated uh, that uh, the challenges faced primary, pi primarily in this simple Hello World app where it was the Cloud SQL, it was quite an uh, issue. First thing, because the documentation was using PDO as database connector, whereas I'm trying to use MySQL. And uh, even if I use MySQL, there was issue. Like um, in this Google Group forum, uh, let's see, uh, let's go there. There's a lot of people saying that they couldn't connect to MySQL. Uh, like, uh, hello, this whole bunch of PHP app engine cannot, cannot connect to a Cloud SQL. So many, so many since 2016 until here, you know, things like that. Then, because the thing is, let me see, uh, let me show the, they're using PDO. And then in the, yeah, this is where you get your, just now I'm showing you the MySQL DSN, this, this stuff, right? And uh, the port number they put here is 3306, which is the usual one even in our local host, we use 3306. But, but I've come to realize that in, for, in the Google App Engine for this one, uh, the DB port I should put now, even if I put 3306, it won't work. Is it, is it because of the unit socket? Normally you don't have the unit socket in the database connection stream. Right? Mm, that, um, Normally it's like host equals something, then DB name is something like yeah. the password. Yeah. But the database connection stream, you have the word unit socket. Mm. Where's the part of the database connection stream? Mm. Go back to the, uh, the YAML file. Hmm? YAML file, uh, this one. Uh. Ah. Mm. Yeah, you have your unique socket here. Yeah. 
Which I'm not sure because even the over here it also has the unique socket also. Wait, uh, the socket. Yeah, it's also in the app YAML also. So I thought this would be the the compulsory few. I have no idea. I have no idea. So I I really I really tried three three zero six. I try empty that. That means I that means in my. Yeah, your index file. Index. Which is here. No, I'm not. You're not. Oh, because okay, fine. You use my you use my SQL I doesn't take in the. Because the DSN usually formatted in a, is one string mm. that you just pass into whichever library you're using. Mm. I think PDO's case, it just sticks in that connection string. So DSN is like a connection string. Mm. Right? As long as you have a connection string, then you will know, you know how to pass it internally mm. and get the get pieces. Mm. Whereas if you're using the SQLI, it probably requires you to pass in all those things. Yeah. So in, in, in some applications that, that we've built before, we actually have a parser that will look at it string mm -hmm. because connection string is like generated by some other uh, uh, library mm -hmm. or some other service that you connect to a service service exposes a environment variable and so we actually have to write a parser that will pass that environment variable at, because it comes as a long string mm -hmm. into these component parts mm -hmm. and break it down to these things like. mm -hmm. so you could have that uh, we could have done what you could have done is like read that component that DSN DSN mm -hmm. environment variable mm -hmm. and broken it down into you know, pass it into these component parts. Mm -hmm. It's one one possibility. Mm -hmm. Or you could in your in your app YAML, you could have just broken it down to the small chunks that you have that, that you need. Mm -hmm. right? Over here you can just broken it down without the MySQL DSN, just break it down to MySQL blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. uh, server and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. Yeah. Just curious, the pot has to be a number, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it can be the okay. So where I found this DB port now, this thing uh, is in a two-year-old, <laughs> two-year-old YouTube video. No, I was like, oh. I was like, seriously, seriously, like, let me. Ask your eye, right? Yeah. 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 Like I was, I was like half doubting. Really, should I trust this two-year-old video? But <laughs> so I uh, go to the the eighth minute. Uh. Okay, okay. So this is from Google itself. Nope, it's from VT Games. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Junior Star Jim have enough video to match. <laughs> okay, where's the Okay, let me just increase the I think you set the port now you just default to using the uh, you just default to using the yeah, so this is where I saw A, A, pod is now, host is now as well. Then I was like, okay. Oh, oh, the SQL I, the, the, is it because of the signature itself? In what? It's in the arguments 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it has to have something in the fifth argument. Yeah, it, it needs to have something in the fifth argument. Yeah, but even then host now, I'm like, okay, like I can't. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I tried different permutations. <laughs> it yeah, <laughs> it didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think it because SQL I the initializer over here in line line twenty two, right? It needs to have because it you in order to use the socket, you got to set the host and port to now. Mm -hmm. In order to use the socket, like, I believe. Yeah. So that's why I was theorizing that it was dynamic because it might be that Google is setting it up. So that's why since you're yeah. setting a string, it knows which one you are. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully with, with this discussion and with this tutorial, but perhaps, you know, um, it, it can help <laughs> future developers who are using MySQL. Yeah. The question I have is, when you are deploying a new version, does the old version, does the old version not just, is, it, is the site still up when you are deploying? Yes, the site should be still up. Okay, so it's probably doing a blue green deployment. Because there is, uh, whenever I go into the, actually when you are at the home page, right? Um, you see that every time I deploy, there will be actually a version over oh. here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So could it the slowness be due to like their packing up? Okay. What? what? Split. Split. What? Split top right. Go a bit more top. 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 Right. 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 That. Uh huh. Uh huh. Split, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. So you can do A/B tests. Mm. Yes. Mm. You can traffic. Um, okay. You can traffic. So you can see the first one is hundred percent. You can actually, if you wanted to, you can split it among. Oh, you can have multiple uh, instances mm. running and then split the traffic. Right? Okay. That's kind of cool. You can do A/B testing here. Yeah. Although we are okay with that. Okay. So this is for the same app. Yes. So you have different versions. So could this be one of the reasons why it's uh, so slow in deployment? Because it needs to suppose save the previous version. Save it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so because when they're doing the deployment, they're bringing up a, they're creating a doc, building a Docker image, publishing the Docker image, bringing up a server, publishing that Docker image, mm. putting that Docker image, and then running it, exporting the port. And then the whole thing. Oh, that's right. Oh. So it's all Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Yeah, it's all Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's, uh, this, so can oh, you? Because you're using Flex that's running on another server. Mm. Okay. Server. If you go to GCE, mm -hmm. you'll see your server, right? Let me see. Yeah. The VM instances. Oh. Nope. That was interesting. <laughs> so I guess admin gen is. Because Google Cloud will be handling that, that CE for me, and it's not my CE. But are you using Flex? I'm using Flex. Oh. Okay. So can you directly uh, SSH or SFTP to the... Accord uh, actually, according to... You could, if you do some... Uh, if you deploy it as a container, the container shouldn't be... SSH, uh, SSH uh, yeah. debugging, yes, for flexible, but oh, no for yes. standard. Yes, SSH is the running container, like, is it? Yeah. Faster, like, faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See that the instant startup time one is really 20 seconds. Right? Oh. Mm. So that, that's why, though, that's why. You could, I mean, after this, I could just go back and try with a standard environment and see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the flexible environment is at least to read as people as it was taken to build up. It needs to build a new container and all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas the standard, maybe has a few standard containers to just map the right volumes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so this basically is my learning experience. Hope, hope it uh, helped to give you all some inspiration to try other things. So yeah, this go and try. Yeah, thank you.